welcome to a very special episode of Scrollplay, the Elder Scrolls Online role-playing show. I'm your host, The Human Floyd, and very excited to be interviewing Lawrence Schick, the lead lore master about RP in Elder Scrolls. Interviewing Lawrence with me is Eve, player of the Ashlander wise woman, Ephoba. Eve is a supporter of my YouTube channel on patreon.com slash thehumanfloyd and won a raffle to be here today. My channel is all about RP. If you're new to role-playing, you might want to click the link on the screen to see what it's all about. For the rest of you, let's go meet Lawrence. All right, welcome to the show, Lawrence Schick. Thank you very much. Happy to be here. So you are the lead lore master for ZeniMax Online Studios. What exactly does that entail? Uh, lots of different things, actually. In general, it's with, uh, with my opposite numbers down in Rockville to make sure that what we do at the Elder Scrolls uh, is in line with what, what they want to do at the Elder Scrolls, that it doesn't contradict what they've done in the past and doesn't contradict what they hope to do with it in the future. I've been doing that for some years now with them. So, uh, you know, we, we've got a, a a really good, solid, trusted relationship. Uh, I know where all their red lines are um, and uh, know how to uh, how to keep our stuff uh, within the without coloring outside the lines of, uh, of what they want us to. Totally. So that's one thing. The second thing is uh, that I am the uh, culture and society guy. Uh, so I am. The person who you go to uh, when you want to figure out how something works in the culture that you're working with, um, of the many in Tamriel. Uh, so, and it's not my job to say, you know, no, we, you can't do that. I, I very rarely uh, uh, have to say that, and I, rare, and I rarely should. Um, what I always try to say is, well, I see what you want, what you're trying to do here. Here's how we do that with you know the Khajiit or uh, in Cyrodiil or with the Nords or whatever culture we happen to be uh, we happen to be talking about. Or here's here's what happened in history that uh, that informs what you're trying to do, uh, so that we can touch on points that are going to be meaningful to the Lorehounds and will uh, uh, add up some richness to the world, so that it's not a generic fantasy world because uh because tamriel is is far from being that uh, it may have started that way over 20 years ago but uh, over time it has really developed its own flavor and its own uh, distinctive feel and tone um and so i try to make sure that that tone and feel uh carries through um in all of the players interactions with the environment and the non-player characters um so that they feel solidly like you know they're immersed in tamriel Absolutely, absolutely. And creativity comes from limitations, so I imagine um, having to work within all of the lines of Elder Scrolls lore lets you come up with some pretty interesting stuff. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, there, it's, it's already very rich, and, and so when we go to, to do stuff that, you know, usually we're building on something that has gone before, uh, sometimes we're making up new stuff that because nothing in previous games has touched on that exact thing that we're speaking about and addressing in this quest or, or whatever. Um, and so we have to do something that is going to uh, feel like it uh, is a natural progression from stuff that, uh, that we already know about the world, uh, so that uh, we're expanding organically uh, upon, uh, upon the world of the Elder Scrolls um, in a way that uh, reinforces um, the kinds of experiences that you've already had in Tamriel and uh, makes it feel like uh, that's, a, that's a natural progression. Absolutely, yeah. So a lot of people who are interested in lore also happen to be role players. Uh, they kind of go hand in hand in a lot of ways. Right when the Elder Scrolls Online was announced, there was immediately a massive role play community. <laughs> and, and they made their own website and people are already coordinating and figuring out what, you know, guilds from the lore they're going to emulate and stuff like that. Um, why, what is it about the Elder Scrolls Online that keeps this really strong roleplay community going and has had it going since before the game even came out? Uh, well, there's a, there's a couple of answers to that. Uh, one is that the experience of playing in Elder Scrolls roleplaying games 
is really strongly rooted uh, in the history and experience of tabletop role-playing games, uh, such as uh, Dungeons and Dragons, you know, RuneQuest, uh, later games like Pathfinder. Um, the way that people play those games uh, is is highly social, uh, and the world of Tamriel uh, is really informed by the kind of play that people have been putting into those kind of role-playing games, you know, since the mid 1970s. Uh, so it's it's set up to perfectly embody a, a place where you can go in and role play your character uh, who has this who comes from this rich culture and has this rich tradition and history that you can draw upon uh, when you are uh, when you are playing your character. Um, secondly, unlike a lot of fantasy worlds, a lot of fantasy worlds um, like say you know Tolkien's Middle Earth or uh, uh, a George R. R. Martin's Westeros, right? They're, these are worlds that have essentially one author, one creator, who's decided what all of uh, the history has been, how it all fits together. There's one big lore daddy who says, you know, this is what happens. Uh, this is what's true, and uh, and everything else is false. Um, Tamriel, uh, the Elder Scrolls, isn't like that. Um, it is a uh, it is a shared world that has been developed over time um, by a number of different uh, number of different designers working together. And those designers have all been very attentive to and receptive to what the players think and feel about what they've been doing. Uh, so it's, it's a, it's a world that has been set up in order to reflect many different viewpoints and worldviews. Um, and, uh, so, you know, the Elder Scrolls, one of the fundamental concepts behind its lore uh, is, is that of the unreliable narrator. Uh, in that every, in, instead of lore being delivered, you know, like on tablets by Moses down from the mountain, uh, every bit of lore in Elder Scrolls is delivered from the viewpoint of a character. Um, whether that's in a book or in dialogue or just in the way the character reacts to some other character. Um, that that everything everything comes from that person's viewpoint, so that there is nothing that you can necessarily point to and say this is gospel. Uh, no, it's not. It's what that person thinks, and that person over there may think something totally contradictory, uh, and that's perfectly fine. I mean, that's how the real world works, uh, and that's the reasons why Elder right. Scrolls resonates so well with players. I mean, it, it feels like a real world where, where people believe different things and disagree about it all. Uh, so uh, that's, that's one of the reasons why, I mean, uh, that's a key reason why uh, Tamriel is, is such a, uh, a perfect environment to go role play. Uh, because you can embody the, whichever beliefs uh, you and the person who you are role playing, uh, what, what they would think. You can choose from among all of these rich cultural uh, backgrounds and uh, ideas and histories and myths and legends, uh, which ones are important to your character, uh, which ones you absolutely believe, and which ones are heresy to you. So that's a lot of fun. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. So you had mentioned the designers being attentive to the players and kind of making sure that uh, all of that was wrapped together. And we were actually wondering, is there anyone at ZeniMax who role plays or perhaps maybe watches us role play? I know a lot of us like to imagine that there's some imaginary or invisible figure in the corner giving us the silent thumbs up. So you were wondering if that was the case. Well, uh, you know, we hire for role playing. We hire for role playing grounds we hire for passion about role playing so you know nearly all of us play uh, uh role playing video games uh, tabletop games uh, live action role playing games uh and you know yeah we're in the world a lot uh and uh, uh we don't announce ourselves because that would break immersion uh and when you're role playing you know that's that's what you're going for so um but uh yeah a lot of us uh, enjoy uh, going and seeing uh, what the players are doing, what they're making of this this world that we have put out there, because what we create is the potential for uh, for behavior and activity and fun and interaction. Uh, and so, of course, we're fascinated to see what people go and do with it. But you won't hear us uh, announce ourselves. 
<laughs> oh, bummer. <laughs> <laughs> that little NPC mouse in the corner is actually Lauren Schick. <laughs> um, and, you know, that's interesting that you say that there is a lot of uh, sort of role play intent put into the lore and stuff like that. I was wondering if world design itself is is influenced by the idea that people might be role playing in some of these places. Uh, in every aspect. Um, we, uh, you know, when we create uh, urban spaces or, or settlements or whatever, you know, uh, in most places, you'll notice there is a place where people could easily gather. Uh, often there are a few NPCs there already um, just to sort of seed it. Uh, but uh, there, there are clearly places that are designed for social interaction. Um, we, uh, we have that in mind all the time. This is and, and has been from the very beginning. Previous Elder Scrolls games have been single player games. Uh, so they have uh, emphasized um, an experience that's based around, you know, just you, the single hero. Um, we are and always have been based around uh, uh, the potential for group interactions. Um, we, we rarely uh, force them on people, um, but we give you the opportunity uh, to take part in them and we give you friendly places to do it. Uh, so yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, anywhere you hear a bard singing, uh, <laughs> all in the background, you know, that's a that's a social that's a social arena. A huge part of the role playing are the emotes. Um, obviously, people use these in a million different ways to express their characters. Uh, can we look forward to some more emotes in the future? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, we are. Uh, I mean, it, it all depends on what how slammed our animation team is uh, with, with, uh, with stuff. I mean, what, as we try to go forward with each of the new DLCs, uh, one of the things that, uh, that animation is doing, we're trying to add uh, new sort of culturally appropriate animations uh, so that as we, as we build out each new uh, uh, cultural area, you'll see things that are, uh, that are typical of those folks. Um, so we keep the animation people really busy. Uh, but they love the emotes, uh, and you know they're always looking for opportunities to add more. Uh, and so you can you can absolutely count on uh, that there will be more emotes, uh, you know, coming out, uh, uh, trickling out a, a, as we have time to do them. Awesome. That's very exciting for me because when I was going through the Rothgar storyline, I kept on noticing all of the different emotes and kind of the idle waving of hands while people were speaking and. Uh, then I sat and tried to find them <laughs> to see if they were added or not. Uh, yes, it, it, you know, some of them, they'll, they'll be gradually, uh, certain of them as appropriate will be turned into things that, that, that players can use. But yeah, we're, we're constantly uh, trying to add to the, uh, the living feel of the world uh, so, that, uh, so that people feel more lifelike, their environment feels more like it's... Uh, it's a place and not just a stage set, uh, and uh, that uh, uh, that the little the little animations and sounds uh, all uh, all work together to to form sort of an immersive soup that uh, that makes you uh, really feel like you're in Tamriel. Hmm. All right. Well, the other thing that I wanted to ask is uh, in in Elder Scrolls, the role players really like to create. Lots and lots of characters, particularly role players who run storylines and, and uh, community events and that sort of thing. I was wondering if there are any plans to allow us to expand our character slots beyond eight. I can tell you that that is absolutely on the big list of stuff uh, yes. that, 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 we're, uh, that we're hoping to do. And, and all of this stuff requires engineering time. Uh, and so, you know, it gets prioritized differently uh, depending upon um, the needs of the moment. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, that's, that is absolutely on the big list of stuff. Wonderful. I'm really liking this big list of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that's now, how uh, to keep having jobs. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> on this big list of stuff, are there any plans to allow cross-faction role play? So instead of having to roll a second version of yourself on a different faction, actually allowing someone from Covenant and Dominion and the Pact to all role play together? Yeah, that's a bigger piece of stuff. Uh, 
take a lot more engineering effort. And so we're noodling around that because because we know that that would be a popular thing. So we're trying to figure out how can we do this without breaking everything. Um, so uh, so, yeah, you know, that's 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 on the big list of stuff, but farther down because it's a bigger chunk of work and it's a lot more uh, uh, invasive to what's already been built. Um, so, uh, uh, but, it, you know, we are absolutely aware that that's a thing that would be uh, well received. Uh, and so we're, uh, uh, we're, we're trying to figure out how we can make that work. We haven't, we haven't cracked that code. Yet. Nice. Yeah. I think a lot of people don't realize how much technical work actually goes into something that seems pretty simple. It's, uh, like you said, it's almost like a game of Jenga. You don't want to mess it up and make everything else fall apart. Uh, very much. You know, this is, uh, this is, uh, this is like the most complicated entertainment in the history of the world, right? And it's all handcrafted. Uh, and every little piece that's in there was made by an artist or crafter, uh, you know, in our studios. And they all have to fit together. Um, and uh, if you, uh, and some of those things are very foundational. Uh, and if you mess with it, it has unintended consequences. Uh, and so that's why tweaking things of that sort, you know, the more that they put tentacles into other parts of the game, uh, the, the touchier it is to, to change it. Uh, and so the more we have to uh, kind of figure out what we can do that will improve things without causing something to some widget over there on the side to fly off and, uh, and, and uh, irritate people and uh, make us look like idiots. So. Definitely. Yeah, it's kind of a new frontier still in a lot of ways. Um, well, you know, we're all of this stuff, you know, none of the, very, very little of it is uh, is stuff that you can point to and say, oh, you know, we, we've done that before. We'll just uh, we'll just replicate <laughs> that. Right. No, you're, you're breaking new ground all the time. Absolutely. So uh, speaking of breaking new ground, uh, can role players look forward to any other content in future DLC that we might be interested in? Uh, can you be a little more specific? <laughs> um, I mean, like, uh I, we try with every DLC to uh, to to uh, meet some of the needs of the role players, but uh, what have you got in mind? Well, there's all sorts of stuff. I mean, obviously, bigger things like cross faction role play and things like that, and new emotes are always nice. But I think one of the things that a lot of role players loved about Orsinium was that there was a bathhouse, and the Mages Guild is massive, and there's all these areas that are like undeniably for role play and for the purposes of role play and I think people really appreciated kind of the uh, extra efforts for that. Yes, uh you know part of it was we looked at the urban spaces that we built before and what worked and what didn't uh and picked out things that worked really well and then emphasized that uh, for Orsinium and the and the strongholds and places like that. Uh and we'll continue because we're always learning and uh, we're always uh, observing uh uh, in the game, um, what players use and what gets unused. Uh, and so what gets used, you're going to get more of. Uh, so uh, I can tell you that on the big list of, of, of stuff, uh, there's a whole category of stuff that's called, that we refer to as quality of life, uh, which is just making it easier to play in the game and, and to interact with other players and to interact with the game systems. Um, and food, uh, a big chunk of stuff on that list in, in 2016. Uh, so a lot of that is, is more systems oriented. So I can't really speak to it, uh, uh, authoritatively. Um, but I know that that's, uh, that is something that, uh, uh, is getting a heavy emphasis in next year's DLCs, especially toward later in the year. Excellent. Nice. Nice. And then this kind of goes back to what we were talking about earlier about uh, gaps in lore and uh, what you do to fill them. Uh, Eve, do you want to elaborate on this question? Yeah, this was actually um, one of the ones that I really, really wanted to ask uh, Lawrence in particular, mostly because I, I get this quite a bit when I'm talking to other role players. So from time to time, uh, role players will come across a scenario that isn't cleanly articulated in the lore. Um, a lot of times we'll refer to this as just kind of that gray area. And uh, in, in cases where the lore is vague or just not there at all, what would you suggest for a role player to do when they're trying to figure out the best way to proceed? Uh, the better handle that you have on who you are in the world, uh, then, and the, the better sort of 
you have an idea of how you fit into the culture you came from, uh, then you tap into that uh, and draw upon uh, draw upon your own character conception uh, as to as to how you should react to things. I mean, um, uh, Elder Scrolls. You know, you look around, you see all the NPCs, you see how they interact with each other uh, and how they uh, how they react to different things based on their culture and heritage. Well, they are just little AIs without a whole lot of depth to them, right? You are actually the living and breathing characters that bring the Tamriel around you to life. So think about who you are, how you would react, and uh, and make your choices on that basis. And anything you do is lore appropriate. You are the living characters in the world. Uh, you are bringing the lore to life based upon who you think you are. Uh, so you can't really put your foot wrong um, if uh, unless you're deliberately you know goofing around. Um, if, if you are doing something that you think is appropriate for your character, then it is, uh, and you are contributing to the lore of. Uh, of the living uh, world of Tamriel, uh, you know, much more than those, uh, than those uh, NPC mannequins standing around, uh, because they've only got so much to say. Uh, you can say anything you want that you think is appropriate, and it de facto is, because you are a character in the world. Awesome. Let's go for I, it. Yeah, I, I really like that answer, because I know that there's a lot of fear when when we're dealing with traditions and rituals, that if we make a decision that someone else is going to come along and say, no, that's not in the lore, so therefore it shouldn't be the case. But, you know, to your point earlier, there's conflict in real life too. There's going to be conflict on beliefs and traditions here as well. So I like that. Thank you. Sure. And I mean, that's the same way the NPCs interact with each other, right? You know, you're doing that wrong. Uh, they've got their opinions and, uh, and so do you, and your opinions are... Uh, are perfectly valid uh, within the context of the world that you're playing in. So, uh, you know, somebody can come along, and it, it may be that their character concept does, in fact, uh, uh, view what you're doing as uh, as improper and incorrect. But that's just their character concept. That doesn't mean that you are improper or incorrect. It means that you are deep within unreliable narrator territory. Uh, <laughs> and, uh uh, and you are just uh, enacting the reality of Tamriel, which is that people disagree and have different uh, uh, different opinions about uh, what has happened in the past and what's appropriate to do now. So live it out. <laughs> awesome. That's that's a beautiful answer. I love it. It's it's like we're all the unreliable narrator. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's exactly. Right. That's so cool. You know, that's the world we've built for you to uh, for you to flesh out. Uh, we just give you that background uh, so that you can uh, you can incarnate uh, those cultures and those characters um, and uh, you know be the people of Tamriel who who are uh, uh, making the world alive. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. That was our last question. My pleasure. My pleasure. Um, I've been uh, uh, playing role playing games uh, since uh, since the original. Dungeons and Dragons in 1974, uh, and designing them since 79, and uh, you know, for a long time there, uh, we were designing role-playing games for computers uh, that did not have the richness of the uh, multiplayer interactions that we had back at the beginning in tabletop games and live-action games. And now, you know, finally, uh, we are we are getting back, gone full circle to a place where we can all be player characters. Uh, and and uh, and and live out our own stories instead of just the stories that the uh, uh, that the designers have have hard coded into into your RPG for you. So uh, long live role playing, I say. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you again, Lawrence, for talking with us. And uh, on behalf of the role players, thank you very much for working as hard as you do and and ensuring that the the lore is fantastic. Well, thanks very much. That. That warms my heart. <laughs> awesome. Thank you again, Lawrence. And thank you, everyone, for watching. Remember, keep role-playing. Peace. <laughs>